tracking is a hugely important part of paid media campaigns. Without conversion tracking, remarketing pixels, and URL tracking, it's pretty difficult to know what is and isn't working, and it's near impossible to know what optimizations to make. Now, one of the things that has always been a little bit of a thorn in my side is that LinkedIn required manual URL parameter tracking. You had to type them out all yourself. There was no shortcut. Now, you can still do that, but recently LinkedIn created some dynamic tracking parameters that I think are really going to save you and, honestly, me a lot of time. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through what those dynamic parameters are and show you how to set them up for your account. I want to start by giving a quick overview of how you've been adding UTM parameters to your current URLs on LinkedIn, assuming that you are, and you absolutely should be. And this is the fully manual route. You can see here, I've got just the Paid Media Pros homepage. We then have all the tracking that we would use for source, medium, campaign, and content, four of the five main UTM parameters. And I added in just some basic information. If that full URL is a little tougher to look at, I broke them down below where we have source is LinkedIn, medium is CPC, campaign is example campaign name, and content is ad copy name. Now, up until now, all of this needed to be typed in manually. And although you're probably fully capable of making all those changes, sometimes you get in a hurry. Sometimes you don't realize you've accidentally typed the wrong letter and you can have a lot of typos that come into the mix. And sometimes you get in a hurry and you don't realize that you have a typo. Or if you're trying to run multiple ad creatives in the same campaign, for example, you don't realize that one of the campaign names has capitalized letters and the other one is all lowercase. In your Google Analytics platform, those two are going to show up as different line items because the capitalization matters. So anything we can do to take out the human effect when it comes to tracking is going to be really useful. Luckily, LinkedIn within the past few months has announced new dynamic parameters that you can use in the platform. We're going to just skip down to the table here and focus on this. The first column is going to be static parameters. You can still see that you can still use source, medium, channel, all of these as you normally would. They then give an example set up down here at the bottom. And one problem I have with this is that they don't tell you that each of these will track different in your GA platform or any other CRM that you have unless you set up rules. They show you what it could look like, but they don't tell you that each of these would be different line items. But anyway, this is how you would set those up. And the stuff we're here for today is going to be up in the second column, so the dynamic parameters that we now have available for LinkedIn. We have account ID, account name, campaign group ID, campaign group name, campaign ID, campaign name, and creative ID. All of this means that whatever you have as those values in your account will be automatically pulled into your URL tracking if you utilize the right parameters and markup. Down here at the bottom, you can see campaign ID is the first example. They have campaign underscore ID equals, and then two open curly braces, campaign underscore ID, all capitalized, and then two closed curly braces. That's going to be the formatting that you need to use for each of these parameters. And one thing I will say, they have this example set up and they have campaign ID as the parameter here, but you don't have to use the same language in the variable that you do in the parameter itself. You can use whatever you want as long as you have this formatting correct and the parameter name correct, you're able to pull this into whatever field you want. So jumping back into our Excel sheet, that means that if we wanted to dynamically import the campaign name and the content or creative ID, we'd have it look something like this. Now you can see that the UTM source is still LinkedIn. UTM medium is still CPC because those are not dynamic parameters that LinkedIn offers. But for UTM campaign, I have campaign name in the curly braces with the right formatting. For UTM content, I have creative ID. But if I wanted to, I could add in all of the other parameters that LinkedIn offers. And those would look like this with the proper formatting. I'm not entirely sure why in the help article they don't just use the two curly braces on it because it makes it a little bit easier to find. But just remember that you can use any of the parameters you want in any way, shape, or form as long as you have those curly braces. They are capitalized and use the underscore as the difference between the words in them. Now, two things I want to call out. First is really the only issue I have with any of the dynamic parameters, and that's the fact that many of them use ID. Specifically, that we only have creative ID available and there's no creative name. And I want to show you why I'm not a huge fan of that. 
but for any of those dynamic parameters that include ID, you're going to see a number that looks similar to what would show up here for this website visits. It says website visits, which is the campaign name. Down below it, it says ID, and that is 68502916. That means nothing to me without any sort of context. If I were in Google Analytics and I saw that number show up, I would have no idea what that meant. Now campaign group, and if we click in here, the campaign that's listed here also has an ID that starts with 317. Both of those have the option for the name to also be pulled in, which will be automatically pulled in exactly how you see it in the interface. So this one would be website visits dash June 18th, 2024. But when it comes to creative, there's no opportunity for a name to be pulled in. You're always going to have these ID numbers that will be in place. Now, the good news about that, if you really need to look it up really quickly, you can filter for those and they do filter pretty quick if it's a day that the LinkedIn system is moving quickly. So let's just say I wanted to filter for that text ads down below. I'll pick a section, maybe even the end. I'm guessing 266 doesn't show up a ton in my campaigns. Come up to the search bar, filter for 266. It's the last three digits here. And you saw in real time how quick that popped up to the top. Now, depending on how often you review performance of LinkedIn ad creatives from Google Analytics data, it might make sense for you to do a combination of both. You could pull in the creative ID as well as manually typing in the name. Let's look in Excel real quick. I'll show you what that could look like. As you can see here that I have in E13, there's nothing that says that you can't combine the dynamic parameters and the static parameters into one to see how everything performs. Ideally, you would have a new system in place that says all naming convention would follow this setup, or you could simply add in a different creative ID like they showed in the help article, whatever works best for you. But you can pull in both if you want to, to make it easy to see at a really high level, but then also find the nitty gritty data later on if you need to. The last thing I wanna show you is where you can use these URL parameters. There are three different places. First, you can go to your account settings, go to URL parameters, and they will be populated in this field here. You can see that they have account ID with the dynamic parameter, UTM source equals LinkedIn, very simple. All of these parameters will apply to all campaigns and creatives in your account. But if you don't want that or need something more specific, you can go into a specific campaign group, choose a new campaign, head to the URL parameters section in the builder, and then you'll have the same type of setup here for campaign parameters in the field, or you can add account level parameters if you want. But then the last option is simply to use them as you would create regular sponsored content and add them into the destination URL that you would have in your campaign. They will work in all three places. Just make sure that whatever you use in one area of your account is consistent with the other to make sure that your tracking is easily decipherable once you're out of the platform. I'm a big fan that LinkedIn now has dynamic parameters. It's always been an extra tiny headache every time I have to set up a new LinkedIn campaign that I have to type out the URL, make sure everything looks good, maybe even have a colleague look at it to make sure I didn't spell campaign wrong, something along those lines. Hopefully this will save you a little bit of time. I know it's already saved me some time, but if you have any questions about how these dynamic parameters work or anything else tracking oriented in the LinkedIn platform, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.